Good afternoon to you all. Be very welcome. Good afternoon to you all. Be welcome to to this uh, Shell Precop 26, all met Italy 2021, taking place in Milan from the 30th of September to the 2nd of October. Proyecto en el Burua, Lurraldearen Erresilentzia Bermatzea da. Maia anitzeko gobernantzaren ikuspegi batez, alde interesatu gari bilduz, eta klima ekintza tokiz toki aplikatuz. Este evento Urban Clima 2050, colaboración multiagente para financiar la adaptación en Euskadi mostrará el compromiso vasco para cumplir con los objetivos del Acuerdo de París a través del compromiso político, la legislación, las estrategias concretas, los medios financieros y la acción sobre el territorio que implican a una gran variedad de actores que trabajan por las resiliencias. We are going to give the floor to our development, sustainability, and economic development and Satapia. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. Be very welcome. Welcome to all of you who have met here on a presidential world and to all the people who are online. Be very welcome, all of you. From the 1st of November to the 12th of November, we are going to celebrate the Conference on Climate Change in Glasgow. And due to this, we have met here. We have met some of us from Bilbao and 600 other people uh, on the other side of the screen. This will be one of the most important uh, meetings at an institutional level in the whole planet. And from our dimension, which is a more humble one, we want also to let our hearers be vo our voice be heard around uh, the climate change and the actions we are implemented against it. And uh, we are starting today the participation and cooperation in a topic that has arose a very big interest. <laughs> at the worldwide level, and we also need to have our place. Here from my land, this event is starting, that is going to take place in November. So from the vast government, from the Department of uh, Economic Development, Sustainability and Environmental Issues, we have determined that this environmental and climate change challenge is a real prior priority. And we don't say this. The vast country is one of the more than 30 regions of the world that are uh, conforming this alliance. And this uh, means uh, an international acknowledgement to this commitment commitment in order to achieve this neutrality in the year 2050 and to have a resilient territory to the effects of the climate change. In the Basque Country, we contribute and we want to be present in Glasgow with our commitment at many different levels. We are going to let our experience be known from our social commitment, economic and industrial one. We also face the challenge of and the commitment of a vast country with a decarbonized uh, energy. And we are going to talk about the offshore vast case of the strategy of energy and the strategy of clean hydrogen. It will be a opportunity that is unsurmountable in order for us, uh, for all the regions, the regions four and the two coalitions, so that we can meet and work jointly. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a turning point, and we wait and we hope that different agreements can be reached in that place, and they can be established in three different fields. So the greenhouse uh, gases uh, and this greenhouse effect will be reduced or will disappear. And we have also to speed up the changes in our territory in order to minimize the impact. And we need funding. We need funding, climate funding. We have to work on this action against climate change. And from this point of view, the program next Euskadi 21-26, coordinated with the, with the rest of institutions, we are contemplating investments for the recovery, transformation, and resilience of the Basque Country, with 60% of the measures oriented exactly to this energetic and climatic transformation with a catalog of actions. 
that can have a total impact if of in of investment of 18 million euros we are talking about generation of renewable energies but also sustainable mobility digitalization in the administration in the companies and in the value change human habitat natural habitat prevention of natural disasters and circular economy and these actions must be in a strategic layer but also facing the big challenges we are are facing, opening up a great deal of opportunities. So this is the spirit of the European Green Deal to join economic growth, employment and protection of the environment in a way that cannot be stopped. Uh, breaking down the use of resources and trying to reduce this greenhouse effect emissions, a model that is going to allow us to reinforce the commitments that are going to guarantee our welfare, welfare for the next decades. And with this event, this European Green Deal, so this means we also merge with the European Green Deal and then we will reach, in our opinion, at least to reduce the emissions of gas, but also to give a big push to our companies. And we need money, we need funding for it, and there are also public relevant investments in order to face climate change, to start with actions and implement actions. This is what we have to do. And I am talking of actions at the seaside, in ports, areas that can be flooded, management of waste, and new industrial process linked to the bioeconomy, to a circular economy, depollution, de decontamination, of floor, everything must be included in those plans, renewable energies, and in this fight, we have to work together, we have to join efforts, and we have to cooperate among the institutions, and this is the Urban Climate 2050, a real action with multi-level governance. We will talk uh, about this project into depth. Uh, in this afternoon, but this is a consortium of 20 entities, and no doubt about it, the biggest project of climate action we have got in the Basque Country is here, is in these actions, and we have worked until the year 2025 with this project, and from that moment onwards we will continue. We are 20 organizations with the public society, EOB as a coordinating society, and many other departments of the Basque government with URA, the Water Basque, the Water Basque Agency, the three provincial governments, the three bus capitals, the town halls of Bacchio, Saraus, Bermeo, Guernica, Lumo, where actions are going to be implemented in a pilot project that will allow us afterwards to extract conclusions to go on in other municipalities. Foundation Alto Clima, five technological and scientific centers, Astive Fetres, Ternalia, Naker, and the School of Engineering. The project Life Urban Climate 2050 has got the main goal of acting with a cooperative model of implementing actions that can be replicated at an international level. And in order to organize this event, we have cooperated with different institutions and we will have to keep on cooperating to go forward before finishing. Just to tell you that this event is an event prior to the one that is going to be held and has been selected, the Urban Cl Climate 2050 that is taking place in Milan in order to know what we are doing and how are we are doing things. Moreover, in uh, we are going in Aste Clima to work in this field and the agenda of the municipalities is indispensable and we are going to implement many actions at every level with the citizens in general with all municipalities, with all the agencies that are working in this field, different governments at every level, and in, because there is still room for improvement and every initiative is important and all of us have a place and the vast society is aware of that. And what we have to do today is to be aware and to start with different initiatives. And this is, in fact, what Urban Clima 2050 consists of. That's why all the things you are listening to, to all of you, to all the spectators, we encourage you uh, to come closer to us from this uh, private initiative, everything is relevant. Apart from the actions we can undertake from municipalities, regional governments, everything counts. And we need all of you. We need all of you. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mrs. Minister. Now we are going to have the presence of Kamal Aguirre, President or Chairman of Feudel, and also Mayor of Vitoria Gasteiz. The floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon to you all. First of all, the minister, th thanks to the minister, thanks to the vast government, my deep uh, gratefulness for having invited me to participate in an event like this. And above all, because we cooperate constantly with the vast government along the year and through Eudel. We also want to thank you for all the work that you are doing through the municipal network and other networks too. So thank you so much. It is very important, the point of view, the local point of view, to take it into account, especially in a challenge like this. And also the municipalities of the Basque Country, we are present to cooperate with you in this strategy of Green Deal. And uh, we are, do agree with it, and we are ready to work uh, in favor of this climate neutrality and to make an effort in this sense. In Vitoria States, we are also working in this uh, direction because the world cannot put up with this anymore. Uh, we have to stop talking and start acting. And this is the work we are doing in Vitoria. And for instance, there has been a very important growth in the last year regarding housing, regarding activity, regarding citizens, and from the years. In the last 15 years, the consumption of energy has been reduced just to 2 percent. This is not much, but we haven't uh, incremented the consumption of energy in our city. We have reduced it a little bit. The, the emissions of CO2 that have been analyzed by the town hall, we have reduced them in a 30 percent in this uh, last Last, uh, five years. So not all the emissions are collected, not all the ones with this greenhouse effect gases are emitted have been analyzed, but there has been a reduction of 30 percent, and this, ha this has been also influenced by the use of public transport. The consumption of water has been reduced uh, in 40 percent since the last drought. So there are some indicators that tell us that we are on the good way, but we cannot be self-indentured. The number of trees in Vitoria Gasteiz are 112,000, so one per two inhabitants, without taking into account the green ring and the forest of Vitoria. Many of you know them, and if you don't know them, I invite you to do it. So we are going on the good way, but we keep on working, and we have to work in these uh, emissions that are generated by the CO2. We have to bet uh, on uh, transport, on food, on bicycle, and with public transport that must be electrified to transform our economy. Our industry, Vitoria, is a very industrialized city. Almost 30 percent of uh, the uh, gross product comes from the industry. The automobile sector has got a very important presence, and we have to help them to this transition to the new models of mobility. And then also construction buildings. Of course, in the buildings we have to work in order not to build more, but to rehabilitate what we do have with this energetic efficient. And we have to add the green uh, urban infrastructure that are totally necessary in order to generate uh, um, more wells of CO2. So Vitoria Gasteiz, we, in Vitoria Gasteiz, we are very committed in this uh, fight against the climate change, and we want to make our cities and towns neutral places in carbon. We want to be one of the first uh, people in, in Europe to obtain this change, and we have the cooperation of the vast government. So from this point of view, once more, than for New Del, we have to say that municipalities of the vast country, we are ready to work with you in order to obtain this climate neutrality. Thank you so much, and have a nice afternoon. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor. And now we have got uh, sustainable blue economy and clean energy unit life program of the European Commission. Good afternoon, Christian. Good afternoon, everybody. A pleasure to be with you and thank you for the invitation for this event. Uh, greetings from Brussels. I'm speaking to you here from, from Brussels. As a representative of the European Commission, uh, it's a pleasure to see your activities boosting mitigation and adaptation to climate change on the ground. Uh, we saw this summer the tragic floods and forest fires are happening 
the number is increasing and we are still behind in our efforts to tackle climate change. It's time to act now. We just heard now, stop talking, start acting. A few words about the LIFE program. The LIFE program has since 2014 a new feature which is called Integrated Projects. The aim is to support national and regional authorities to implement on a large territorial scale environmental and climate strategies and plans. These life integrated projects do co-finance the architecture of such strategies and plans, not the activities as such. Fostering and supporting the architecture has been proven to be very successful in many parts of the European Union. It has the potential to really change something for all of us on our continent and beyond. There's obviously, obviously a lot of groundwork to be done and uh, this groundwork needs also to be financed. And one of the goal of integrated projects under, li under, life, under, under the LIFE program is to bring together under one umbrella, LIFE funds, other European funds, national funds, and also private sector investments. Your project has been selected. I need to mention here that there's a certain competition. We have more applications than we can support. And I would take I would like to take the opportunity to congratulate you that you have been selected under the LIFE program with your integrated project. Why has your project been selected? Urban Climate 2050 has all the ingredients for a solid LIFE integrated project. It has an ambitious long-term vision. It introduces climate change mitigation and adaptation in other policies like special planning, water, energy, and at all territorial scales. And thirdly, it involves a wide range of stakeholders. I believe, I believe the project is setting the foundations for climate strategic actions in the Basque Country. It provides the three stepping stones towards effective climate actions, which are citizens engagement, long lasting capacity building, and targeted interventions in critical areas. Looking into the future with the LIFE program, the LIFE program 21 to 27 has again the feature of integrated projects. We launched in July of this year a new call, the Call 21, which in fact asks again the public, in this case public authorities, as I said before, to develop and present ideas in this concept of integrated projects demonstrate how large-scale, long-lasting and encompassing various funds activities can make a change in the burning situation in a time where we recognize that we need to act. The climate sub-program in life is quite stable. We have identified a series of scopes and possible areas of interventions which you can find in our core documents on the website. The call deadline to present the first concept note is the 19th of October. You certainly know about the Green Deal, the European Green Deal, which has three main objectives. No net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050. Economic growth without or decoupled from resource use. And no person and no place left behind. Your project and the LIFE program are without any doubt part of the European Green Deal and I've seen in one of the first slides the Basque Green Deal. So let me close by saying I wish you all success for the implementation of your project and the related activities under the Urban Climate 2050 project for the benefit of the Basque country, for Europe and our world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your intervention, Mr. Strasser. Vamos a, antes de comenzar a... Now, before starting with the first round table, we are going to project a video of the project.
comenzaremos. We are going to start introducing the first round table of this event with the title Cooperation Multi Stakeholder in order to push the adaptation to the climate change and the best practices, where we are going to have the presence of Alexander Boto, Ana Juariste, Maria Jose Sanz, and Carlos Garbizu. Urban Climate 2050 is a clear example of multi-level governance. As we have seen in the first intervention, this implies the commitment, the cooperation at different levels of the public administration and also to regional agencies, EBI and URA, and five technological centers, ISTF, Petra 3, Naker, Technalia, and Technol. Apart from the Foundation Natur Clima, we have got with us some of the entities that are part of this cooperation consortium that is launching or pushing urban climate of 2050. We are going to give the floor to the first four guests, please. As I said, first of all, we've got the present of Alexander Boto Gasteguieta, General Director of EOB, Public Society of Environmental uh, management of the vast government. So what about the origin of Urban Climate 2050 and how do you organize that's a project of such a big score, a scope? How was it generated, Urban Climate 2050? Please allow me that as an entity, as EOB, as an entity which is coordinating this project, please allow me that in the origin I, in the origin, I can remember the person that at that moment uh, believed in this project and made the most difficult thing, which was to to weave the first threads to constitute this multi-level alliance, a multi-sectoral alliance. Uh, in this year, this person has uh, gone away, has passed away. He was very important for this team of Yobe. And I think that in this project, as she used to say, the the things that are impossible can be done, they are feasible, and I want to pay a tribute to this person today who wove this project and has made uh, possible, impossible things, and the first fruits are seen here. And how was it managed? Can you tell us how was it managed? How was it generated? As I've said, the most difficult thing was this relationship of setting up a multi-level governance with 20 entities. And I would remark, making reference to a book that I have just done from Adriana Machucato, Mission Economy, she always says that there are three ingredients that are key aligned with uh, what the minister has said in order to approach the challenges we have, which are uh, transformative projects. They must be innovative projects too, and they must be cooperative projects too. So at that moment, uh, the project was woven with the idea of making with these three ingredients transformation, innovation, and cooperation. And this project, Life Urban Clima, is an example of this kind of challenges. Thank you so much, Mr. Boto. Ana Juaristi, who is the boss of the Environmental and Health Service. Thank you for participating. What does it mean for uh, San Sebastián Donostia to participate in Urban Clima 2050? Okay, this is a opportunity, a opportunity that can't be improved to participate on that because benefits, many benefits have been given to us. I would like to mention, first of all, that we had foreseen some actions, some adaptive actions to fight against the climate change to work in a most effective way and a quicker one. And thanks to it, we have achieved the best coordination to uh, perform this task. So in this sense, within urban climate, we have been able to install processes of self-consumption in five municipal buildings, and also we have launched a green infrastructures in the city, as you have seen in the video, for instance. In this uh, dam of Articucha, we have participated in the Natural Climate Network. We have seen how we are experiencing some transformations also in the forest of Orion, and we are also working in a 
space of a wood uh, of 24 hectares where we are planting several things. And we are recovering also uh, some other uh, water space or wetlands thanks to the cooperation of the Water Agency. And Urban Climate has given us the opportunity to make very innovative projects, for instance, solutions that are based on nature. We are renewing a guide regarding these things, uh, regarding different databases we are creating. And also another project which is very pretty too, which is in the Anoeta Stadium. We are analyzing the re re urbanization based on solutions close to nature in order to see which is the best one. And finally, at an adaptive level, we are uh, working hand in hand with Technalia with a metro climate tool and being San Sebastian a city that, that is by the sea, it is very important for Donostia, uh, something very important. So we have launched actions and adaptations and climate change. We have improved the coordination with other entities and we have created synergies and we have participated in pilot experiences. Okay, thank you very much for your cooperation. And there are other people who are involved in this project. And we have got also Maria Jose Sanz, scientific director of the VC3 Back Center for Climate Change, which is the role of VC3 within the framework of the project. Is Urban Climate 2050 an example of science for policymakers? Okay, this uh, this is the basic center of excellency of the technological network. And in this project, what they do is to contribute with a more basic knowledge about different aspects of the climate change. Our center is a multidisciplinary one, but the role we are playing in the urban climate is very much linked to the analysis and, for instance, of how to integrate health, climate change, and urban uh, life in order to provide with solutions based based on nature, and moreover, apart from focusing on the topic of adaptation and mitigation of the climate change in the urban areas, they can also generate a much healthier environment and uh, that can be better inhabited by citizens in general. There exists, too. There exists right now a need that all the members of the public administration in the different roles and in the different missions, they can have the best, inf the best information available whenever they have to make decisions or to implement a strategy or certain measures as the ones we have seen before in the video. So VC3, another action they have got within the project is the generation of a program of training adapted to the different levels of the public administration. So nowadays this is in a stage of consultancy and identif identification of which the needs are then some pilot projects will be elaborated and then we will provide with a more complete plan. And another of the things we do is an analysis of how climate change is integrated and how the strategy of climate change is integrated in all the sectorial policies that are existing by now. Because it doesn't make any sense that there is not an integration of policies. The climate change is a problem which is multidimensional and therefore it affects the areas of the planning, of the regional planning. But these are really the three most important topics we are working on. And on the other hand, we are cooperating in a very close way and supporting AOVE in the generation of some indicators for the evaluation of the strategy and monitorization of it that has been implemented until now and the potential strategy for the future. And we are supporting them in this case. And uh, the people who have to implement this and the most important stakeholders, well, EOBA is the most important one. We have got other actions and we are cooperating with other people, such as TechNoon or EOBA itself or other agents. But for us, this is a wonderful experience, perhaps the first one in the first country that allows us to uh, generate a cooperation stay, a space, which is the only, word, the only way of approaching this multidisciplinary um, problem. Thank you so much, Mrs. Sand, for your intervention. And to finish up with this round table that we, where we are talking about different stakeholders to push the action and adaptation of best practices, I would like to introduce to uh, Carlos 
was one of his two scientific director of uh, NACER, uh, which is the role of NACER within the framework of this project. Good afternoon to you all, first of all, to thank uh, my friends here of Hiobe for this invitation. First of all, the role, the role of, of NACER. Uh, NACER has been focused on the peri-urban, peri-urban environment. So this is this kind of a strip uh, between the country and between the, the cities. So this is something very heterogeneous. And the activities of NACER I would like to highlight is that thanks to this project, we keep on improving the climate scenarios in terms of the airspace resolution and temporal resolution. And there are people who tell us, if there are those scenarios, why do you go on? Because this scenarios are always linked to uncertainty. And that's why we have to keep on working with them in order to minimize and to reduce these uncertainties. In the end, this is really um, the point of view or the destiny or the fate of the scientists. We are always in this sea of uncertainty. And we are making also risk maps, climate risk maps. Some of them are uh, physical, such as this uh, water erosion of the floor. And then uh, biological risk too. We are making a follow-up of the populations of the mosquitoes, of other living things that are vectors of diseases. And we all know that as a consequence of the climate change, the distribution in the space and the time and the latitude of these populations of uh, organisms, of bugs, are changing. And those are vectors of diseases. And also in some actions that also that other partners of the project are doing, which is multidisciplinary and multilevel, we are observing whether the actions are really contributing to increment the content of organic carbon in the floor, not only because this uh, matter can increment also, can increase uh, the storage of carbon, because it improves the structure of the floor, what in the end benefits, uh, because there's less erosion and there's less conservation of humidity. And this is a project channeled. And what we do is really for this science for policy, why we are collecting in a lot of data of climate projection, distribution of arthropods, erosity, erodability, organic carbon. From all this data, with a context, we can obtain information. And this information, with this information, we acquire knowledge little by little, step by step. Not only an obvious knowledge, but also due to the interaction among the partners. It is a subtle knowledge or tacit one that is going to allow to improve uh, these actions that are already have already been started and to provide with the necessary information for those people who are making the decision so that a decision-making process can be an informed one. The problem is very complex, and each decision means to choose a possibility among a never-ending ontologic possibility, something very complex. So we are responsible for the fact that those who are making a decision can do it being informed. We would like to finish with this blog, inviting you to answer in a very short way to a last question. Which are the lessons learned regarding this project? Mr. Botu. OK, this life year on climate has started two years ago. We still have go four years to go, as the minister has said, in order to learn and to make and to extract content for this lesson learned. But there are two issues that are really fundamental to insist in cooperation in this uh, collaboration. I think this is what has been said here. This is something fundamental. Innovation, too. Many of the things we are doing are innovation, although this is a social innovation, innovation of the governance, really, which is something very complex, so management of the complexity. I think this is one of the lessons learned. We have to go into the Mrs. Juarez, from the town hall of Donosti, San Sebastian. I could emphasize two things. One has already turned up, and it is to participate in, in, in this life project means really a kind kind of label of excellence. Uh, I can so concede it, but somehow this is a project that has undergone very strict evaluations. And then I would like to underline that this life is a life made up by many people. So 
I would say that all the entities and bodies who are working actively in climate change of the Basque Country are participating. Mrs. Sanz, I have made a list. I have made a list so that, so that I can't forget every, anything. Yes, I'm going to sum up, but with my list, please. Okay, I think that we need more than ever multidisciplinary approaches and cross-cutting approaches, so co-production, not only with the experts, and to be more receptive, because we scientists are more receptive to the needs of the parts of the of the stakeholders. This is a lesson learned. And when we have to build positive narratives, uh, thinking of the opportunity, not only we have to think that this is a challenge and we are going to have negative impacts, but this is going to generate opportunities too. And this is going to be made through the construction of positive narratives. We have to engage all the stakeholders at the level they can contribute with. So citizens, private sector, economic stakeholders, and the environment provides with services to a society that has to be seen are as interdependent and connected with the society. This is another lesson learned. If this is necessary to count on the local knowledge, we have learned that because the scope of this problem from the point of view of mitigation and adaptation is interwoven at a local level. We cannot separate this. And to sum up, to treat this or to deal with this as a complex problem, to manage complexity through an integral knowledge. And knowledge is not only scientific knowledge. And I think this is a lesson we have to learn. All of us. Thank you. Mr. Ar Mr. Arvisu, very shortly, very briefly. Okay. I think perhaps this answer is a little bit strange, but what I'm learning most is from this activity of raising awareness, a script, raising awareness, uh, commitment. As Marie Jose has said, this is a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary uh, topic, and it is polyedric. So apart from uh, specialists, we also need people who can lay a bridge among the different disciplines and different sensitivities in this topic of the climate change, and then to say, the more we go into deep in this raising of awareness, it shows me more that we have to reach the heart of the people. And then we will reach uh, the brain. I'm talking about the data of Kirin or whatever. And we have to reach the heart. And we need a scientist, uh, the help of other groups who can address uh, heart better, such as the artists or whatever. But raising awareness is something we have to keep on working on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having been here. And Thank you for having participated in this Urban Climate 2050. Thank you so much. After having listened to this intervention, it is quite clear that although this is a complex system due to the number of entities, partners, its the typology and the actions defined in it, the result is worth a while. As we have mentioned before, the cooperation, the bidirectional cooperation among entities generating knowledge and people who make decisions is something indispensable to achieve resilience in the territory. We have to keep on working in cycles of uh, continuous improvement and and transparent among peers, so a win-win strategy. We are going with to go on with the second round table, whose title is Adaptation on the Ground, to show the good practices of a territorial project at a big scale. To talk about it, we have some of the entities that are part of this consortium of cooperation that is launching the project of Urban Clima 2050, so that they can tell us what are, they are doing and what they are going to do. Antonio Aiz, Ahmed Jauregui, Luis Pedrosa, and Guillem Tuz are going going to participate. So please, the floor is yours. We are going to start welcoming Antonio I. Salazar, General Director of URA, the Basque Agency of Water. Good afternoon, Mr. Ais. Which are the main interventions that have been carried out regarding this adaptation to the climate change? Okay. from. And from these hydraulic policies that has been developed and exerted through URA in this case from the gas from the vast government, there are two things that are reason for concern, but they are no they are no new things. We are talking about climate change, but perhaps we should talk about uh, climate behavior because these two situations uh, have happened. Uh, for, for a long time before we started talking about this concept of climate change. On the one hand, the risk of floods, and the other, the warranty of the supply of the water resources in quality and quantity in the line of what this vulnerability can imply in this uh, behavior of the climate. 
and it can influence negatively on the territory we are working on two lines. First of all, from the planning and through the identification of these risk maps with the different risks that the territory and the population has and related to it, uh, these episodes of floods that we could have. And also from the resilience of infrastructures, from the hydraulic ones, because of these climate behaviors that can alter in this case, uh, for instance, the beds of the river and the river behavior as a consequence of the elevation and the level of the sea or because of the occupation, uh, this anthropization made by the human beings of the natural uh, environment, in this case of the water environment, and all these things with a system of detection and prevention, so of a system of adaptation to these uh, uh, situations, the water system, together with the whole organization of civil protection of the Basque administrations in order to reduce substantially the vulnerability to the risk of flooding. Regarding the second aspect, the management of these water resources, there is no doubt that the system of rainfall alters it. It has been systematized substantially. And on the other hand, um, situations of drought take place, and we act also against them through the planning and through the planning of the conditions and the systems of supply, cooperating especially with all the management institutions, which are the ones that supplies the service of water in our houses or in our industries. And to finish, because they have told me that I should be brief, I would say two things related to the fact that in all these processes of planning, of the development of the systems, of the models, of the forecast of evolution of those behaviors, and these alterations, and this uh, effect in the human beings and also the environment, we have to count on science as the instrument that is able to let us know which the situations or to predict those situations that we can suffer. And also thanks to the technologies uh, we have available in the whole network of uh, river uh, channels of the Basque Country, we have got a very intensive network of sensors that make us predict beforehand and in a, an accurate way, any time of alteration regarding these episodes of vulnerability I was mentioning, and this makes us act uh, in uh, a cautious way regarding the reduction of the vulnerability that these alterations and risks can bring about, especially in the field of the population. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Lai. And now we want to know the initiatives that the neighbors of Bakio are performing. And we have the presence of Ahmed Hauregi. We have her presence here. She is the mayor of Lekatio. So thank you so much for being with us. Which is the role of Bakio in this Iran Climate 2050? How is it that the town hall of the dimension of Bakio has got interested in this European project? Okay, yeah. If I had to answer in few words, I would use just one word, just one word to, to be able to live. Why Bakio has chosen to enter Yumbar Klima 2050? To be able to live, to keep on living. I don't know, perhaps many people do not know what Bakio is like. Bakio is at the coast, it's a small town of the Biscay coast. And it has 2,800 uh, inhabitants. And in summer, we even have 10,000 inhabitants. So there's an increase in population. And behind a decision, what is there behind in order to understand it? I think that it is very important to understand the context. Therefore, I would like to mention two very important topics, in my opinion at least. On the one hand, our territory. Uh, in a great extent can be urbanized and that's why we have projected for the year 2030 we have projected new uh, 1,900 floods and now norms have been amended, have been modified because it was the way it should be and we have decided to make a common reflection and community reflection among all the citizens and as a consequence of this uh, collective reflection we have 
decide while well, the community has requested that we should be working in favor of a sustainable vacuum. And we wonder quite often, and what is sustainability in the end? So the decisions that we adopt, that we make, can never condition the generations, the future generations, and the very own generations that uh, future generations will take. That's why we are here, on the one hand, to defend the sustainability of Bacchio and to achieve it, and on the one hand, because Bacchio is a town that uh, lives reflected on the sea. It's got the longest beach from Biscay, and that's why we've got a risk, uh, but also we have got a value too. And therefore, more than 60% of our territory can be flooded, so we are surrounded by uh, little rivers. Another message we have received from the community is that once more, we have to get connected with the territory if we want to survive and if we want to if we want life to keep on developing we need to understand how our uh, f floods uh, oh, sorry how our river and water channels move in order to protect uh, our uh, population so we are going to transform our center we are going to modify it and we are going to create a marsh why because we understand that in order to protect our lives we need from our, we need our territory so that's why we are going to create a very natural system at the center of Bacchio a center in order to protect our lives I could be talking 20 minutes more but to finish with my intervention I just would like to say that I think it's very important important to suggest two reflections that I think that uh, must be discussed. On the one hand, the first reflection uh, would be uh, in order to face the climate change, it is important to make decisions, but also to open up spaces, to open up spaces in order to implement those decisions. The climate uh, uh, challenge is not only our challenge, it belongs to the community. If community doesn't believe in it, we won't achieve it, we won't succeed. So we have to give a voice to the citizens and another second reflection. I think and I consider that the climate change uh, has shown the risks and has put them on the table so that we can realize and also so that we learn to get adapted to the consequences of climate change. But I do consider too that we have to launch a message to the citizens, which is the following one. The citizens have to understand that all these things are positive because in the end, the main goal is really to protect life and the lives of all of us. So climate change, although it can be seen in a negative way, we can make the citizens understand that this is something positive. Why? In order to back up all of us, and despite we have got the time against us, it is true that without uh, uh, losing time, wasting time, we have to get connected to the territory. We have to show this need to our community. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jaureliza. Now we have got Luis Pedrosa, Director of Energy and Environment of Tecnalia Research in in your case, Mr. Pedrosa, which is the role of Pet Technalia in this project? Which are the advantages and barriers you find? Good afternoon to you all. Good aft I represent the energy and environment of Technalia. Luckily, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about energy, which is a topic that is very hot at the moment. If we focus in our participation in the project. The role that we have is around uh, or is set on four pillars. The first one, the generation of climate information, and information that must be accessible and that must be authorized in order to allow the public administrations to make the decisions in the best way and in the most informed way and to anticipate themselves to the impacts to be proactive in the construction of a resilient territory. This would be the first pillar of activity. The second pillar of activity has to do with these researches in sectors from this, uh, from this information available that we have got uh, about uh, the climate. Uh, and I'm going to mention some examples. And I have got a list uh, the same as Maria Jose, because otherwise my colleagues will really yell at me, the ones that have developed the project. For instance, the recheck of these municipal emergency plans, the vulnerability of the energetic sector, especially in the infrastructures of generation and distribution of electrical energy and in the generation of tools for supporting the Basque municipalities to evaluate vulnerabilities and risks in front of the threats of the climate change. 
generation of information and also sectorial studies. And the third of the sectors is oriented to incorporate uh, um, the climate change in the formal instruments of the ordination of the territory of this urban plan. And also answering specifically to the guidelines of the order of the territory in our community of the year 2020 that have been pioneer in the introduction of these aspects of the climate change regarding how to guide this ordination of the territory. So from Technalia, we participate actively in incorporating this in the climate change. And I could give our specific examples, such as the one uh, sectors of renewable energies, where we have integrated the analysis of the vulnerability and climate change in installations of generation of energy, the special plan of Zorroza, or a guideline to orientate the future plans of the municipalities. And the last pillar is the one that has to do with the implementation, the implementation of solutions in the local field, and also with a visionary view of a global impact. So specifically, I could mention the work with the three vast capitals of our community implementing solutions based on nature and uh, insisting especially on those aspects of uh, increase of temperature and the topic of the floods, of the river floods. Thank you so much for your participation. And last, we are going to know the actions that ASTI is implementing. And we have the presence of uh, Guillem II's coordinator of the area of climate change of ASTI, member of the vast Technology Alliance, which is the role of FASTI in this project. Can you tell us about the good practices you are implemented in the Basque Coast? Good afternoon. Yeah, in NASTI, we are focusing on the coastal aspects and uh, we are emphasizing trying to answer to the questions of which are the risks the climate risks from a uh, marine, from a sea origin that are going to affect the coast, the coast in three sectors. So the urban areas, uh, the port areas, and also the nature areas, such as estuaries and beaches that are, let's say, uh, wrapped uh, and that are close to uh, urban areas or urbanized areas. And in this sense, the climate risks, especially uh, the level, the, the, the increase, the rise of the level of sea. And in August, the last report of the CCC was published. We see that there is a potential scenario, maybe not the most probable, but possible. It is possible the increase of one meter of the level of the sea at the end of the century. So we have to understand well which are the involvements when this is combined with also marine storms tides, uh, uh, life tides uh, uh, from the point of view of the astronomy and meteorology and therefore an extreme uh, wave tidal and uh, uh, one step further, which are the risks and how can we get adapted to it? Uh, which is the planning, which is the urban planning we can give to it. And in this sense, for instance, we have got a pilot case in Tharauth where there have been installed for, for 11 years a network of cameras that every minute, every single minute, we are monitorizing, sweeping, if we can say this, what is happening with the beaches, with the tides, and uh, this kind of tools combines with uh, a satellite resources uh, and the measure of the temperature of the sea allows us to modernize and to see which kind, which kind of actions we can implement in the same sense. For instance, in the port activities, we are approaching this uh, port agitation that causes a lot of damage in the maritime traffic in the vessels. And last, also, we've been focused, as I've said, in the monitorization, in the monitorization, not only from the level of the sea and the waves, but also the temperature of the sea. 
this is a very important point in order to know how it will affect to those maritime resources and to the marine biodiversity with different elements of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Chus, for your intervention. And thank you so much to you all for having been here with us today in this Durban Clima 2050. And we perceive that the project has already started and is advancing in a good speed. It is focusing on the coast, urban, peri-urban, and it is an example of regional project that is being developed thanks to a working network. We have been talking about the project and specific initiatives, but can this be transferred to other regions? That's why we have got the last panel, whose title is Together for its Planet, Governance and Cooperation Multilevel, Multilevel to lead the Agenda of Adaptation for a Global Impact, where international experts will continue contribute with their view about this initiative, Urban Climate 2050, and the regional leadership we will have with us, Gonzalo Muñoz, Professor Salem Ohak, Eloise Tsiku, and Jola Gobrek. Uh, the Agreement of Paris urges the states to increase the investment commitments in matters of climate change. And we are talking about investment because the risk of the non-action will be even more expensive not only economically, but also socially. So Financing for climate action is necessary at the global level to significantly reduce the impacts of climate change and move towards resilient societies and ter territories. But how is it possible to foster international cooperation and mobilize global funding for regional and local climate action? We welcome Gonzalo Muñoz, UN's high-level climate champion for COP26 and co-leader of the Race to Resilience com campaign. Gonzalo couldn't finally be with us today, but wanted to share a message in recognition of the regional and local actors who are shaping the actions to ensure the resilience of 4 billion people by 2030. Hello everyone. It is a real pleasure to be able to join even virtually friends and partners from around the world at this final session of Urban Clima 2050. My sincerest apologies, I was not able to join in person for this session, but I appreciate being able to give some opening remarks to explore how we can mobilize even more multi-stakeholder collaborations like we have with the Basque Country. As you just heard, since I was appointed as a United Nations High Level Climate Action Champion for Chile, I've been working with my dear friend also uh, from the UK, Nigel Topping, to increase commitments and the level of ambition from non-state actors to both have global emissions by 2030 and take action on climate resilience to protect mostly those most vulnerable communities from the impact of climate change. Thanks to partners like Regions 4 and the Basque Country, we are mobilizing to deliver action on both climate mitigation and climate resilience through the Race to Zero and the Race to Resilience. This is all part of our theory of change about creating ambition loops between states and non-state actors. This idea of an ambition loop speaks, of, speaks to some of the questions we're exploring today. How we mobilize finance to address the clear gap between mitigation and adaptation? how we can maximize the value of regional and multi-stakeholder initiatives. It is one of the reasons we created the Race to Resilience, to raise the scale of ambition from non-state actors. So when we arrive at COP26, we can call for states to raise their level of ambition too and support our efforts. This is being done for mitigation, but COP26 presents us with the opportunity to do this for adaptation too. We know we cannot create a future which is decarbonized, but not climate resilient. So one of the answers is that we need to make sure people are hearing our message on adaptation and resilience. Firstly, that this is a global challenge which, which requires a global response. It does not matter where you live or do business. The systems we all rely on are interconnected. We are only as strong as the most vulnerable amongst us. This is where forums like Urban Clima have such value, no, not only by bringing multi-stakeholders together and spotlighting best practices, but also to highlight how every actor has a role to play in building climate resilience. 
The good news is that the momentum is growing through the race to resilience. We have created new partnerships on blue financing, microfinancing uh, finance partnership for urban and agricultural communities and regional partnerships to deliver resilience at scale. The message still needs to be heard through, uh, though. Investing in climate resilience is not just the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to do. According to the Global Commission on Adaptation, benefits cost ratio range from 2 to 1 to 10 to 1. So these investments deliver what regions need, jobs, safer communities, regenerated nature and cleaner, healthier living conditions. All of us now, though, we need uh, all of us now uh, know, though, we need more of this. It's not enough. I therefore urge attendees here today to follow the lead of the Basque Country and join the race to resilience and the race to zero and continue to call for COVID recovery plans to prioritize investing in resilience. We now have the opportunity and the duty to imagine a better and safer future and make it reality. We can catalyze a step change in global ambition for climate resilience, putting people and nature first in pursuit of a resilient world we don't just survive climate shocks and stresses, but th thrive in spite of them. So please join and support Regions 4. And join me in continuing to bang the drum on adaptation and resilience so it is placed firmly in the center of the agenda at COP26. Thank you all, and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you, you, Mr. Muñoz. Precisamente en agosto. Exactly in August, it was published the sixth report of the panel of the Intergovernmental Panel about climate change. And it highlighted the importance of generating climate knowledge. Mulhak, director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development, and recognized expert in adaptation to climate change. My name is Salim Mulhak. I'm the director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development at the Independent University Bangladesh in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm uh, happy to provide my uh, inputs into this interesting uh, event. Um, my work has been primarily over the last 20 years working with the most vulnerable communities in some of the most vulnerable countries in Bangladesh, my country, in South Asia more generally, and also the least developed countries in Africa. Uh, and on how to ensure that the most vulnerable communities are enabled and uh, allowed to adapt to the impacts of uh, adverse impacts of climate change. And now in this uh, 2021 year, the second half of the year, we, are, uh, we have seen the IPCC's sixth assessment report of Working Group 1 for the first time in 30 years unequivocally say that climate change, human-induced climate change because of the temperature rise since the industrial revolution of more than one degree centigrade is happening. We now have a fingerprint, a footprint, a, a, a very clear attribution of the impacts, adverse impacts of climate change taking place around the world, everywhere. Every country, even the rich countries are seeing the impacts of climate change, like the floods in Germany and the hurricanes in the United States and the wildfire in California and so on and so forth. Every single day, somewhere in the world, a world record of weather event, extreme weather event is broken, and it can be attributed to human-induced climate change. So we are now in the era of actual loss and damage from human-induced climate change. Now, in that context, one of the biggest issues is how do we help the most vulnerable people adapt to the impacts of climate change? This is true now, not just for poor countries, but even in rich countries, rich countries, if you look at the impacts of climate change, it is relatively poor people in those countries who are the ones who are being impacted by the impacts of climate change. And they are the ones who are most affected. So uh, vulnerable people by and large in every country are generally the poorer people in that country and enabling them to uh, adapt and be prepared and become more resilient is the work of local governments in towns, the mayors of towns, in big cities, the mayors of cities, in provinces, the governors of the provinces, and at the very local level, uh, the village uh, ahead and the people living in those uh, villages, working together, assisting each other, enabling each other to be able to become more resilient to the impacts of climate change. And this is really where, in my view, we are at the cutting edge of 
helping adaptation to climate change. And in fact, these people at the cutting edge used to be known as the most vulnerable communities. They are now actually the leading adapters. I call them the local adapters. And everywhere you look around the world, you will find them. I, I would say in Bangladesh, we have a lot of local adapters and we are trying to link up local adapters around the world and be able to help each other, learn from each other and show solidarity with each other. Thank you so much, Professor Hack. Please welcome Eloise Shiku, Head of Climate Action Advocacy at Region 4 Sustainable Development. Eloise at COP26 Region 4 will present a reinforced initiative, Regions Adapt, which seeks to strengthen the capacity of regional governments to raise their ambition on climate adaptation. In the framework of this initiative, Urban Clima 2050 has been selected as one of the leading best practices. What are the reasons behind this recognition? What other best practices can inspire Basque Country and other regions worldwide to reinforce their commitment towards climate resilience? Good afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to attend this important meeting on behalf of Regions 4. We're delighted to support this pre-cup um, event. And I would like to especially congratulate the Basque um, government for its leadership to bring the voice of regions to the major international instances on climate, such as the COP26. So as you know, we approach COP26. Heads of states and international community prepares to decide on how we will jointly achieve a net zero resilient world. But as we've just heard, the recently published IPCC report shows that we are still far behind to meet, to meet the Paris Agreement targets. So faced with this growing threat, uh, regional governments are leading the way in developing tailored and targeted solutions for their community and environment that can be replicated in other parts of the world. And Regions 4, through its flagship initiative, Regions Adapt, has supported regional governments worldwide to develop adaptation plans and strategies, take concrete actions, and transparently report on progress. So we've captured in our upcoming report for the COP26 how regional governments have raised ambitions for climate action. And the report notably highlights more than 10 best practices that showcase these transformations. This is where Urban Clima 2050 comes in as one of the key ambitious examples portrayed in the report and figurehead of an integrated resilient climate strategy. As you have heard today, it offers a concrete example of a strategic plan that aims to advance climate governance at all administrative levels and that promotes the integration of climate change in different sectoral policies, such as we've heard land use, urban planning, health, water resource management and energy. And this example should be replicated and, and we want to share it with other regions so it can be replicated uh, for other regions around the world. Other good practices that we share in our report include the Jalisco state government experience in Mexico, where they've been collaborating with the tequila industry and regulatory council to improve the sustainability of the sector. The initiative includes the design and implementation of a protocol and certification brand, promoting responsible production processes and ensuring forest conservation to halt, to halt the deforestation of natural forest associated with the tequila production by 2027. So a very interesting example of collaboration of a regional government with um, the, tequila, the tequila and private sector. In the state of Gosas in Senegal, we are sharing in our report an example of a gender inclusive project that has been developed that relies on women to preserve the department's only forest by raising their awareness, providing them with improved stoves that allow them to cook with less firewood through the installation of domestic biogas units. So here, innovation that is gender led. And as the last example, in, and have you, as you've heard today, finding further finance for adaptation is key and is absolutely crucial. And we have the example of Quebec that since 2013, with the revenues that they've been able to generate under the Quebec carbon market, they've been able to um, use and invest $3.9 billion dollars Um, to finance measures to support businesses, municipalities, and citizens to mitigate emis emissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. 
So I will, I will end here. Um, and these are only a few examples. We have many more that we will share at the COP. But we are official partners of the Race to Resilience, and Regions Adapt will support its program, um, Regions Adapt, uh, um, to, to support 74 regional governments to engage in this groundbreaking uh, campaign. Uh, and we really encourage regions present today to join us, to join the campaign, um, and make sure that resilience um, is represented at the COP and best practices are at the center of the discussions. Thank you. Thank you, you so much, Shiku. Uh, our last expert is Holger Robrek, Deputy Director of ICLE Europe and responsible for the area of sustainable resources, climate and resilience. As ICLE Europe is one of the international organizations that supported the Urban Clima 2050 proposal from the beginning, seeing the current progress of the project, what synergies do you see between Urban Clima 2050 and the initiatives that ICLE is leading to mobilize local climate, climate action? Yeah, thank you so much and good afternoon to all participants, uh, friends, I, I'm inclined to say, because we have many in the Basque country. Thank you so much for inviting me uh, to this uh, meeting, uh, which is, uh, I think, to be congratulated as, as a big achievement, not just for the Basque country, definitely it is, but also for uh, like a, a standard setting example of uh, a regional res resilience approach uh, in Europe. Uh, uh, the Basque country for ICLE and its members has always been a very much a pool of inspiration, I should say, a motivation in sustainability, a reliable and important partner uh, to drive the European sustainability and resilience agenda, not at least since the 2016 Basque uh, declaration with new pathways on European uh, cities and towns that included resilience as an integrated element in the transformation that we need to have uh, in Europe, and that was five years ago. Uh, ICLE, uh, as if, if you don't know, it is a, a global city network of more than 2,500 cities, uh, towns, regions, uh, active in more than 125 uh, countries worldwide uh, and representing approximately 20% of the global um, population. We have launched with our members that are climate pioneers, I should say, um, a climate neutrality approach uh, in 2018. All our members by 2050 will be climate neutral, many of them actually uh, much before. Uh, and we promote five transformation pathways, um, of which one is a resilience pathway, another one is a nature-based development pathway. Both are very much intertwined um, when it comes to uh, increase and raise resilience at local and regional level. We also are partner uh, with uh, Regions 4, and um, I would like to say hello to my colleague. Uh, with them, uh, we collaborate um, uh, on the local governments and municipal authorities uh, group for the Climate COP, but also we collaborate closely on the Biodiversity COP, and both agendas merge very closely. Many of our projects have been actually implemented with Basque colleagues, uh, some of which I've seen actually in, in, the, uh, um, in, in the group. I've seen Technalia, a friend Phil Yu, and uh, Gemma Gonzalo, uh, I, I think I've seen, uh, but also uh, uh, Gemma Garcia, sorry, I've seen, uh, but also uh, we've been working with EOB very closely, Technun, but many cities actually, uh, Vitoria Gasteiz, Anna Oregi, the vice mayor of Vitoria Gasteiz is on our political board and uh, leads our political strategies. Including that is uh, our co-chair of the UNDRR's Making Cities Resilient Initiative 2030, and we are the co-chair for Europe and Central Asia. There are um, 40, uh, 53 signatories in Europe re representing 12 million people uh, that uh, implement uh, as a mechanism the Sendai framework uh, by supporting cities uh, on their journey to reduce risk and, uh, and also build resilience by delivering a resilience roadmap, access to knowledge and provide tools for monitoring and reporting. Uh, they um, go by three stages. The first is orientation and awareness raising. I think Basque cities are much beyond that. Second is the understanding of risk. And we have seen in the previous panel that there is much going on uh, in the Basque country uh, and certainly the implementation 
And here, I think uh, urban klima and making cities resilient 2030 come very, very close with the principles no better that reflects uh, in making cities resilient, improving cities' understanding of risk, the plan better, which mirrors the strengthening cities' capacity to develop resilient plans and strategies in making cities resilient and implement better, uh, which uh, mirrors the um, uh, the ambition by, of, of uh, making cities resilient 2030 to support cities' effort in implementing local resilience plans. So you see there is a number of, um, uh, of overlap already at the objectives and uh, more strategic targets. Uh, but uh, when it comes really uh, to the immediate activities, um, the urban klima um, uh, um, project or program uh, has developed a number of tools, instruments, very good examples uh, that help to uh, that help other cities uh, part of the making cities resilient uh, initiative to better understand and boost their disaster risk um, assessments uh, that potentially help to boost the green city agendas green infrastructure nature based solutions that help to uh, embark on uh, very ambitious resilience recovery plans that help uh, to understand how we better can finance risk, finance innovative solutions to resilience, and that help even the digital transformation and integration of topics. For example, San Sebastian is one of the European and I believe the world leaders uh, in using open data platforms to support resilience building and resilience strategies. Uh, so um, I believe that uh, um, the Basque country uh, could actually be a very, very valuable partner to making cities resilient 2030. Uh, and it could be sort of providing guidance. It could be providing technical support. It could help to empower others, other cities and regions in Europe, help to implement the European mission on climate resilient regions, which is to embark uh, in a very few weeks from now, and that will definitely help also uh, to implement Europe's commitments under the uh, global climate uh, regime. And I believe that um, the cities in the Basque country could potentially uh, uh, join as signatories, learn still from others, but inspire others, rather at stage B or C, so rather uh, in, in the mode of assessment and implementation, but it might help others that be on stage A and orientate themselves. Uh, so here I believe um, uh, urban klima actually needs to be multiplied. So I invite the Basque country or Basque actors to join forces with making cities resilient in Europe and Central Asia, uh, Asia and help multiply urban klima. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for intervention, your intervention, Mr. Robrek. Por último, me gustaría hacer una pregunta dirigida a los... Last, I would like to pose a question addressed to the panelists of this last round table and to ask you about your opinion in a brief way. What is necessary so that this Glasgow meeting can mean empowerment and governance at this level? Six is in Glasgow to truly be a multi level action cop inclusive of all actors and levels of governance. Very happy I leave uh, first the floor to my colleague for reasons for. For the COP26, um, Regions 4, as mentioned by my colleague from ICLI, is working closely with the local governments and municipal authorities constituency, so LGMA, to call for a multi-level action COP. And for our members, the COP needs to, to deliver on three main elements in order to be truly multi-level. The first one is to provide localization mechanisms for the reviewed national determined contributions um, that will be presented at COP and mobilize finance towards regional and local action on adaptation. The second uh, pillar is that the COP needs to allow for a multi-level collaboration amongst all levels of governments from the design and review stage of the NDCs, but also on their coordination and on their implementation. So it's not just about reviewing the NDCs, it's putting in place the governance structure, the multi-level governance structure that allows for its implementation. And these plans need to be translated at the local level and supported with instruments and funding by national governments. And then finally, um, the third pillar 
uh, is that the COP needs to promote further synergies across agendas to find uh, integrated solutions for at least two or more of the most pressing global emergencies. And my colleague uh, from ICLE mentioned this. It's important to connect uh, the climate and biodiversity agendas, um, and it's particularly important to do so when this year um, will be the upcoming 15th meeting of the Convention on Biological Diversity, uh, COP15, in which it will be adopted a new global biodiversity framework. So finding those links between those agendas to make sure that we find coherent and integrated solutions is key and needs to be addressed and taken into consideration at the COP. So I will end here, maybe just reaffirming that local and regional governments stand ready. They will be represented at the COP and regions four will continue to support them in, 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 in being represented and leading the, the, the way towards resilience and adaptation. Uh, Robrek? Yeah, that was a wonderful uh, Thank you so much uh, for um, uh, providing uh, sort of some insight to COP here. Uh, it is true that uh, this COP is about multi-level governance action, go governance action uh, and um, uh, we should make sure that local and regional uh, governments will become leading partners in the sustainability change that, that we need. Uh, so they should not be uh, at the end of the value chain any, any longer, but we need to implement a couple of elements here. We need to change to a local needs-based approach. We need to in, uh, uh, change to inclusive engagement, starting from the planning. We need to move forward to integrated planning. I could elaborate for hours on, on that part. Uh, we need to implement um, uh, place-based um, uh, solutions uh, addressing systemic change. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we need to employ a multi-level governance uh, approach in that. Um, uh, we do believe that uh, we, uh, there, there is roles to play for, for all levels here and we have specific asks of obviously to us ourselves, local and regional actors, to step up our commitment and address climate emergency uh, and lead the just and inclusive trans and transition. I think that is very, very important, but it should be connected to what the lady from Basquio said. Uh, it should go with the profiling, it should go with uh, sort of position local and regional governments also uh, in the sphere of uh, resilient champions and that will also attract investment uh, there and it will help also uh, sort of job creation and others. Uh, we uh, ask national policymakers to recognize the role of uh, local and regional governments to ensure that the mandate for action is clear and my colleague from Regions 4 has alluded on what that means including also the financial framework, uh, financing uh, uh, conditions. But uh, it should also leverage on the national um, uh, um, um, post-COVID um, uh, uh, response mechanisms and uh, the resilience and recovery plan should actually include a clear green and resilient fo uh, resilience focus uh, in the activities. We have reviewed a couple of them and not seen too much so far uh, in the European recovery and resilience plan. So net zero resilience should be in the heart of, uh, at the heart of it. Uh, and we call uh, for the financing institutions to provide easy access to the diverse financial mechanisms, reduce bureaucracy and facilitate the direct ex uh, access uh, to finance, financing and investment. So altogether, obviously, we should co-design a vertically integrated NDC implementation and investment plan mechanism. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Robrek. Eskerrik asko guztioi bukatzeko proiektua bian jarri genuenean sortutako leloa gogoratu nahi dugu, gure natura da, guztuko ditugu erronkak. Para finalizar, reto... And now we are going to finish with the same land motif. We started, we love nature, we love challenges, we need projects of this type, transformative projects with multi-level governance, direct intervention in the territory, and it is necessary for it to enable funding channels. We hope that in the COP26 decisions are made in order to reinforce the adaptation at territorial level, regional level, and local level. Thank you so much for participating both, both in personally and virtually and we invite you to follow these conversations and we inform you that the recording of this official event all for climate 2021 will be available in a short time in the channel of youtube for Euro climate 2050 and on your website see you soon thank you